and we are now officially recording. Aww. Welcome back to the show, everybody. How are you doing, Lance? Not bad. Uh, weather has been somewhat temperamental, even though it's bizarre needing surf weather, where like it was just glorious and the sun was shining and the sun is shining, but it's just a little bit nippier now. So, yeah, we uh, we, 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 we had a, a, a water fight last night, which was wonderful and disgraceful um, at the same time. I was being well, it was because I was being, well, hey, do you want to go play? you know, a bit of tennis with uh, your son at the front. Oh, cool. As I walk out the door and then I get hosed from the side. I'm like, ah, it's one of those water fights. Someone's going to suffer. Um, let alone did I realize it was going to be me. And then actually the great <laughs> irony of it after of running around and trying to saturate the living daylights out of each other, a parishioner called about half, not like five minutes after we just finished. And I'm like, ah, oh. so yeah, life is good. It sounds good. <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, no, well, I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I spoke at Al's church last week. That was good fun. Uh, was it last nice. week, Al? Was it last week? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was. Uh, last week, week four. Yeah, it was good. Something like that, yeah. yeah. It was great, great we, fun. We've it's... only lost 57 people. What? Oh, three. three times he's been asked to speak at his church and uh, still no... Yeah. Uh, Still no Scott in the Kelly the Grange pulpit, but you know, well, that's okay. I mean, we'll, we'll be all right. Num you numbers have, no, 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 Scotty no, no, boy. No, no, numbers don't lie. Numbers Scotty don't boy, lie. let's it's, not do this. It's, it's, it is. It is the way it is. Uh, but that was fun. It was I actually, think you fobbed me off twice, Scott. Well, I fobbed you off a few times as well, so that makes me up to six. Well, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I, it's funny because what, oh, what I loved bro. about it is recording something like five six days before and then sunday comes around and you're like i'm gonna sit in the garden and have a cup of coffee while i preach somewhere yeah. else <laughs> it was great <laughs> yeah. I, it's saturday nights at the moment like i start we record our service on thursday i edit usually until 2 a.m on thursday night and then get the first draft uploaded on sometime friday afternoon then I get the feedback about what needs to change, re-edit on Saturday, upload Saturday night, and then it needs to go to seven social media platforms, like including like feed and stories for, um, plus newsletters and stuff like that. Uh, and then I get the panic of like a few weeks ago when I released the service, but I'd copied the link to the website too soon before it had finished processing. So it cut the service from an hour to 24 minutes uh, and that then had to re-upload the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it, sound, it sounds like you're doing Short and more, sweet. It sounds like you're doing more work on that one service than I did for the whole Irish blessing, <laughs> which <laughs> was a massive undertaking. <laughs> you, there might be a better way of streamlining. I don't know. I, I, I that sounds like Frank, too much work to me. It was a lot of work. Great, congratulations on the Irish blessing. What a huge oh. achievement. Um, yeah, dude, yeah. it was amazing. Well done. Thank you. I gotta I mean, be honest. Yeah. When after seeing the UK one. And then I heard about the Irish blessing one. I was like, oh, I hope it's good. And then knowing that you were involved with that, I was like, okay, it'll be good. But it actually surpassed. So well done. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we had, I mean, a great team. Yeah. You know, Father it's Martin brilliant. and Philip. It's really good. And then a massive team. Uh, arrangers and uh, people mixing in studios and people looking at all 500 submissions and organizing that all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate Excel. But we were dropboxing and Excel stuff. And so yeah, it was a pretty intense edit. Um, <clears throat> one of the things early on, mm. though, I had said that um, is that I wanted to make sure everybody was outdoors as much as possible to show our country off. I wanted to use drone footage mm -hmm. to, to, dis to make it different from the other ones going out there. And so, yeah, it seems yeah. to have struck a chord. It seems to be encouraging people, which is great, bringing hope. There's like, we're nearing half a million views now. Um, and it's being played wow. all over the world. Uh, and so I think it's going to be a real document going forward, even throughout St. Patrick's days and whatever into the future where mm -hmm. people can log in and see Ireland, not for what it was or what it is, but maybe for what we hope it to be. And yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. we've gotten a huge amount of feedback and uh, just, it's interesting to see pay, you know, television channels in the UK and in uh, across the world, but in America wanting to play it. And, you know, it's great. It's great. So mm -hmm. It was a massive yeah. team effort, a massive team effort. It was great. It was an honor to be involved with it. But sure, it was 
It was a big effort. Oh, not as big of an effort as Scott puts into his Sunday mornings, mind you. <laughs> oh. like, this is always the case that there is obviously a big difference between the out, how much work something would take somebody qualified to do it and how much it takes me to do it, you know? Um, because I didn't... I didn't sign up to have to learn the skills I've had to learn over the last few years, but here I am learning them. Um, That's so, fair. Uh, uh, so yeah, I could, uh, I could, I could live without uh, uh, just the amount of work that that is, but it's been good to learn new skills and uh, the feedback's been good. At one point they were being shown in, I think seven or eight different nursing homes. Um, right. Uh, Right. which is you know really cool that that, that um, for people who are in nursing homes that they get the chance to participate in that um uh, with the opening up and stuff will bring will bring big changes um uh, to to what what how we do church and that kind of thing so that'll be interesting to try and navigate and negotiate no kidding mm -hmm. no kidding no kidding yeah so bar but editing aside Scott, from that do you, how else do you is your week <laughs> Yeah, I do drip Thursdays. I won't lie. That's um, why don't you but, start on why don't you start uh, on Tuesday instead? But, um, people aren't available for recording. Um, and Tough. Uh, make them available. <laughs> <laughs> it is not uncommon for people to do what you've done just there, which is overestimate my power. Um, uh, and, and in some ways as well, it is nice to have a spell of days where you have a, a shorter workload or where you're just focusing on you, your kind of regular day job rather than um, uh, those commitments. So, um, but no, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's going good. Um, we're, uh, work at UCD is obviously, uh, is kind of mad at the moment trying to figure out how we plan for a new year. Like what's that going to look like in, uh, you know, when you normally have 30,000 people on campus, um, you know, you're essentially trying to figure out what is the, um, how does a town function? Um, so, um, so it's, it's cool to be part of some of the conversations that are happening there about how we do that well and trying to figure that out as chaplains um, for how we look out for students. Um, but we also look out for their, not just their ability to stay safe physically, but also their ability to maintain their mental and emotional health through connecting with others and being part of a community. So um, that tension is a tough one to find, but it'll be a, a good one to do over the next few weeks. So working on the working on it's, that yeah it really is it has changed the whole online thing really has changed everything i did my apr mm. for my phd uh last week on zoom and it was just uh it was interesting it worked uh but there was yeah. certainly there's just certain things you can't do like as far as even just reading each other's body language a bit more or or just relaxing a little bit more when you're sitting in front of a screen and always having to have eye contact yeah. here even though your notes are over there or whatever it is you know uh <laughs> yeah. but in the end, hey, I got through to my third year, so third year research student. Uh, yeah. Yep. So uh, still looking at nice. uh, spiritual formation in digital age, and uh, yeah, it's it's a, more relevant now than it's ever been. Um, so yeah, hopefully enough. that means that I'll be I'm doing the right research at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel actually knowing you're being relevant these days? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, by, fired. by the time it comes wow. out, it won't be. I'll just back to normal again. <laughs> I'll just be the same, be the same come, old. Come, coming from the televangelist, you know. <laughs> I'll be the same old irrelevant Greg. Actually, no, because no one else is doing this PhD right now that we're aware of. It's, it's going to be relevant for many years to come. But still, uh, yeah. No, it's great, man. Yeah, but it's great, great to be getting yeah, to my I'm third year. I'm just looking year. forward to calling you Dr. Greg. Yeah, Dr. don't ever Greg, do that. No. <laughs> don't ever do that. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Dr. Gregory, yes, no, that's, that's right. the appropriate. That, that um, that's uh, right. <laughs> Dr. Gregory M. Fromholz. Dr. Dr. Fromholz. Yes. The whole name yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Farmhouse. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to make the podcast unwieldy, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. That's a price Doc, that I'm willing to pay. Yeah. I, Dr. Her. Craig Farmhouse. That's right. <laughs> Craig, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Cool. Well, um, you're listening to episode 186A. Yes, because of the graveyard shift. Yes, that's correct. Because yeah. because I do. So not we did have to... a an episode. 
sorry, a <laughs> bit of a lag there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, because we don't want Greg to have to go back and redo the entire uh, um, uh, original video for episode 186, which we recorded a few weeks ago, which is part two of our conversation about stories and regrets. And um, so we will get back to that at some stage when it feels appropriate to release it. But with everything that's happened over the last couple of weeks, when, when that was slated for release last week, it just felt really... Mm-hmm. Um, kind of tone deaf and limited to to kind of just throw that out in the world um in the middle of the tumultuous change that we've seen with um the uh, political shifts that have happened with the um the protests and demonstrations that have come about after the um the murder of George Floyd um by police in Minneapolis and the um the outcry for justice that has been heard not just in the U.S. Um, and not just in Minneapolis, across cities in the U.S., across the um, there was which so quickly became demonstrations in Canada, in Mexico, in England, here in Ireland. Um, there has been a, a wave of um, outcry and um, demonstrations um, in order to uh, raise, uh, basically, as part of the Black Lives Matter movement to raise the question of injustice in our societies, um, not just individual incidents or bad apples, but actually systemic injustice and oppression. Um, and so, so we found ourselves in a bit of a tricky position actually with, with uh, you know, how do we, uh, you know, how do we, how, how do we talk about that best at the moment, you know? What is you, what, how have you guys been feeling over the last couple of weeks as you've seen things happen? I'm, it's, 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 broke, it's broke my heart. It's absolutely broke my heart. I find myself, angry uh, uh crying um feeling like i can't what can i do and getting frustrated with that um wanting to make sure my friends in the states are safe uh mm-hmm. and wondering how do we how does a system this systemic racism that exists within the systems and structures be torn apart and rebuilt in the way that that everyone is equal uh and then wrestling mm. with my own role in that as, you know, a middle-class white guy living in Ireland um, mm-hmm. and just feeling like everything I want to do uh, seems too little or doesn't seem to be the right thing. How do I get out of the way yet stand, this, yet stand beside? How do I, mm-hmm. you know, how do I action my beliefs instead of just talking about them all those things so i mean i can't i I generally cannot imagine and what it'd be like right now to be or or to have been a person of color in anywhere in the world for Mm -hmm. my lifetime and for hundreds of years but right now in the states where you know people would just be i mean like the list of of just innocent people being killed I just, I uh, just, uh, honestly, <clears throat> genuinely, um, I, f- I feel helpless and I can't imagine how helpless it would be to live in America right now as a person mm. of color. Um, cause I'm only just a, a, a minuscule sliver. I'm just glimpsing of that in my own life mm. and it's almost overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think uh, I, it, it's, it's, it's wrong. I, I, I know all of us, look, it's, it's, it's evil. And I guess when, when you hear of another death um, yeah. in such a way, um, unfortunately, it's almost like, well, here's another case. Here's another case to add on to the case that happened yesterday or the day before or the week before. Mm. And it just keeps on going on. I mean, Al, I mean, like, um, just, just if I can cut I, across you, Al, real quick. I mean, the list, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, Walter Scott, yeah. Elton Sterling, Philando Castilla, Ahmed, Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. That's only just mm. some. Of and the that's, that, they're, they're, the names, they're the names that have made the media. You, you uh, know, that's what I mean. mean that's I, what I'm saying. I, that's I, only I, just a glimpse yeah. of this horrible yeah. I, evil. And I, mm. I, I, I kind of feel like in, in, in so many ways, uh, there, there are those that have been part of this all their life and then there are those like you know i feel like we're, we arrive so late to a party trying to figure out what's what's my role what's my space what do i say what do i not say mm-hmm. um and actually how do i show even in my silence i'm, I'm trying to be respectful to learn to to, to to be taught to understand to grieve 
um, you know, and I, I guess as you know, and I, we we you know, in the wrestle of of recording this, of of, of talking about this, being very self aware mm-hmm. of three white guys, you know, mm-hmm. um, three Irish white guys. Yes, Greg, I include you in that. You know, where where we are here, and and just trying to figure out what do you say uh, because it's just it's wrong, and I, I think the unfortunate thing. And, and even that is a small uh, of trying to comprehend, like when you hear of evil that goes on uh, and when you see it in America, like the, the, the school shootings and you're kind of going, when will this just stop? When will people actually realize that this, this, this is wrong and what can actually happen? Where, where can things, where can change be brought in? And then you're looking for leadership. And I think we're, we're so much seeing leadership coming from the protests of what is going on of saying this this is just, it's wrong. Andrew, one of the things, like obviously with all the online schooling that's going on, they, um, for, for sixth class, uh, their teacher said they really want them to look at Black Lives Matter as a movement um, because they're mm. saying this is something that there needs to be education on. And how do we do, well, let's look at w- what is going on because this, it's, it's heartbreaking. As, as Greg said there, it's just, it's so upsetting to see people being treated unfairly. Um, or people being killed, uh, and mm-hmm. it just being another mm-hmm. another day, which, which is it's it's wrong. Mm. Yeah, which yeah, and and I think that 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 was very much on our minds when we were trying to figure out, you know, do we record this episode? Like, do we do we like is now the time for our voices? Do we say something? Do we not say something? Is it more disrespectful to say nothing and to just disappear mm. off the radar? Um, should we say something even in the limited way that we can say? Um, and uh, and one of the things that, that that I've really wrestled with actually over the last uh, over the last two weeks has been trying to figure out so how do I actually I like I sat for a long time over two posts that I wanted to write about this um, uh, on social media and like I I was I was really concerned about them because I, on the one hand I was like I'm not the right person to be talking about this but also I'm I was really conscious that I I I don't um, there's never a good time to be silent either. And even if you can't offer the perfect insight to offer some insight or to lend your weight to something, you know, it's not about, it's not about like, you know, cause we're not experts in this area. In fact, actually, I think if you want a really good conversation on this, um, you're probably better off going to episode 167, um, which is our interview with Lisa Sharon Harper, who was here for Rubicon last year, or going to our uh, the Rubicon YouTube channel, We Are Rubicon, um, and looking at the brilliant conversations with, um, uh, you know, there's there's two keynote addresses and two Q and A's with Lisa Sharon Harper. There's an amazing talk for do- from Dr. Eben Joseph. Mm-hmm. There, uh, Dana Masters is on there, and your interview, Greg, with uh, Dr. Rosalind McDonough from the traveling community. Um, you know, th- this episode isn't a, isn't a great starting point. Like, you know, the, 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 this is a conversation that I think we've all been learning a lot about over the la- particularly over the last few years. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so there are some amazing resources there. And we really want to commit ourselves to future conversations about this that also include other voices because Absolutely. we're aware of the limitations of our experience and our insight when it comes to um, questions of race. And yet, and, and yet we, you know, and yet we also find ourselves wanting to say something, especially as people who are, you know, Alan, I was struck when you said, you know, it feels like you're, you know, you're late to the party. And the, the, this, it sometimes feels like we've been living in a world that we, we thought was reality, but for a lot of people who are part of oppressed or marginalized groups is actually a party for us held at their expense. Yeah. Um, and so we, um, you know, admitting our complicity in that, like our mm. conscious and subconscious complicity, being able to um, to realize when we have been, um, you know, all the ways in which we've contributed to that, and also realizing the layers of issues that go into it. Because it's not just a question of, um, of racism or somebody saying bad words to somebody on an individual. It's about how it's baked into the cake of the whole system of society that we're a part of. Um, one of the big things that I've seen online is, is the, um, is people bringing us back to, um, as, as these protests and, and um, have happened around the world and, and profile has been raised for the Black Lives Matter movement. I've also seen other voices coming in saying, but remember, this is also a question of, of police brutality in particular. It's about the accountability of the police for the way in which they treat people of color. So it's not just, it's not just whether or not you're nice to your neighbor, it's whether or not you're part of a society that is designed to serve you 
at the cost of others. Um, yeah. And I mean, unpacking I, that is really tough sometimes. I mean, I watched this morning, I watched John Oliver's show last night on police. I don't know if you've seen that yet, guys. Mm -hmm. But one of the one of the one of the things he said, and I, I took the time to write this down because you know, the institutional racism and brutality, it's all systemic and it's built and like I said, it's baked into the cake and we're we're unfortunately part of those part of that baking. I mean, but John Oliver said this, it's about a structure built on systemic racism that this country created intentionally and now needs to dismantle intentionally and replace with one that takes into account the needs of the people it actually serves. Ours is a firmly entrenched system in which the roots of white, white supremacy run deep. And it's critical that we all grab an effing shovel to do anything less would be absolutely unforgivable. Um, mm -hmm. We need to dig up these roots. Yeah, yeah. We'd be involved in that. And he goes on, he had, he had this incredible YouTube clip of uh, this incredible woman who was so angry and rightly so, 100%, I stand by her. And she said, she was talking about the social contract that exists between um, law and order, quote unquote, and us as civilians. And that's that if mm -hmm. something happens, you come in and you protect us. But the very people mm. who are trying to protect us are the people who are brutalizing us and oppressing us. Mm. She said mm. that you broke. She said you broke the contract when you killed us in the streets. Give a give a f u c k. You are lucky that black mm. people are looking for equality and not revenge. And Whoa. yeah, you know these are the things that. And so you're right. It's 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 part of what's been, but that has to stop. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I'm so thankful for the bravery of those who are consistently marching. I regret, I regret as a father uh, mm -hmm. that I didn't take my family in to march in Dublin and break the mm -hmm. COVID-19 rules. I think I should, mm -hmm. have, I should have exhibited some civil disobedience. Uh, I, I think now I look mm -hmm. back and I think it's gonna be a regret I have because I'm like, I want mm -hmm. to, I don't know what I can do, but I want to do what I can do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I mean, one of the things that, sorry, Al, is one of the things that this week has been an interesting thing is that I, I did a film with a guy called Dr. John Perkins, who's a civil rights activist. I did a film mm. with him two years ago. And, you know, in it, he said, he has this great quote, I wrote it down there that I was asking him about protesting. And mm. he, he, you know, why do we protest? What, what's the reason for protesting? And he said that protesting is the body's reaction to oppression. And, and I'm so thankful that there's clear voices out there that are standing strong. And this Perkins film, interestingly, mm -hmm. has gotten, I don't know, seven, 8,000 more views this week because people are looking for answers. Um, but historically, this thing keeps happening generation after generation after generation. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, you know, yeah. like different places, like, like the Ren Collective, usually on Friday nights do a thing called distance through social worship or some worship, social distance or whatever. And instead they played mm -hmm. the film. That was their worship mm -hmm. on Friday night to their mm -hmm. quarter of a million followers, you know, or there's a church, there's a series of churches in Utah who played it as their Sunday morning service on Sunday. And there's youth, youth groups across the diocese on this Sunday who are playing it um, to have these conversations. So if anything, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe we can help, others by yourself like you're saying scott here's some resources to go look at here's some people to follow yeah have these conversations yeah. we can use this platform to say have these conversations and action these words instead of just talking about it i mean like even today yeah. sorry I'm, I'll, I'll stop talking in a second but like even today you yeah. know reverend reverend william Bar barber of the poor people's campaign he was uh, he was one of the people on the lynchburg revival film i did but their whole campaign today is fasting and encouraging people around the world to fast because at 10 o'clock tonight mm. There's going to be eight minutes and 47 sec 46 seconds of silence mm -hmm. in order to remember mm -hmm. the, the time spent with a knee on George Floyd's neck as they murdered him. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. it's just that the solidarity looks different. I understand it looks different for each one mm -hmm. of us. But I hope that even though we're three white guys on an Irish podcast, that we can at least encourage people to be engaged in that solidarity mm -hmm. together. And, and yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think it's also the, the, the importance of seeing that it makes it, it, it it's the challenge of how far do you want to go to bring change. Uh, Dorothy Day, uh, she started there was a protest back in the 50s and that she started where, where they were it, the, the government were encouraging people to go 
if there was a nuclear attack to, to, to go underground um, and, and to, to, to bunker all. And she, they, they went protesting and said, no, we're not doing this and was put in prison and whatnot. But a number of years later, they actually stopped this. And the, the protest, because it reached such a pivotal point, they said, this, this is unsustainable. We have to bring mm-hmm. change. And I think mm-hmm. that that's the importance of, it, it's, it's just not good enough of people saying, okay, now we'll do this or, or what we'll have, we'll wear cameras now on our vest so we will see what's going on. I mean, that is bringing in an accountability on one level. It's not enough. There has to be the change. And I think, I, I, I mean, it's, it, it, it's the difficulty of what you say, what do you not say, what do you do, what do you not do? And I think there has to be an education. I think one of the things that um, Lee Sharon Harper said when, when she was on our so which really struck me was it's it's not about what goes on today but it's looking at the past it's looking at where your family has come from the things that have gone on in the past that you think don't have any relevance for today they do Mm -hmm. this is not a recent issue this is not a new pandemic this has been going Mm -hmm. on for generations and i mean we saw Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I do, I want to bring up, you know, because as, as a man who stands in front of a church with a Bible f- for a photo op, everything about that was wrong. I mean, the pathway, the, the, the pathway that had to be cleared with tear gas and rubber bullets so that this mm-hmm. photo could be taken. It just, it's evil. It and, is. And, yeah. And, it and as, is. Much, as, as much as you want to see change there has to be not just accountability but there has to be repentance there there has to be an acknowledgement yeah we we pray for all in this and that includes donald trump you know where we we pray for the conviction of 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 holy spirit we pray for the example of of jesus and and for the love of the father for everyone to realize i'm saying this because we, we just looked at trinity sunday and creation and how all have been created all have been created in the image and likeness of the triune mm. god and how we treat one another we really say no we're not all in the image and likeness of god some are better than others and mm. it is just and it's a question of where do i do that myself in my own life where do i in my conversation in how i look how i act the things i do how i prioritize and that's the challenge you know and mm. it's, it's looking for these and it's not belittling it to a here's a teachable moment but actually what is it that we bring in change and saying this is going to hurt but this hurt is nothing in comparison to generations of just evil mm. and, and and that's I, well well we might like yeah I don't. I don't even know if the change is going to hurt so much as uh, as so much as it's going to be uncomfortable. But the beautiful thing about liberation is it liberates both the oppressed and the oppressor. And so, oftentimes, the the need for violence um, or the uh, the willingness to hold on to power without thought, like you know, no matter what what price you pay for that, um, it doesn't just dehumanize those that you're hurting. It is also a choice for for your own dehumanization, and. Um, and uh, that's one of the one of the 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 things that I've heard recently is 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 that our our liberation is bound up together, because we we need to be liberated from the systems that make us believe the why of the lie of white supremacy as well. Mm-hmm. And that is you know that's part of our culture here as well as as well as in other societies across the world. It's not an American problem. It's not an English problem. It's an every it's an everywhere problem. And it's a and. But particularly in places that um, where white supremacy is, is alive and well, it's not public, it's not spoken, but it's the secret ingredient in the secret sauce that makes that is part of every product that that our societies produce. And so, being able to begin to disentangle that, to begin to uh, to understand that, and go through that process of of acknowledging our own complicity, I think is absolutely massive. And it is a question as well of how we, how do we be good allies? You know, like how do we, yeah. how do we yeah. actually, um, how do we support other people uh, and particularly people of color who are driving us towards a better future, who are prophetically taking verbal mm-hmm. and physical mm-hmm. action mm-hmm. to, you know, to speak to us of our, I was actually writing about this last week that, um, 
that protest is a form of prophecy for Pentecost Sunday, that, um, that to, to, ima to imagine and demonstrate and call us to create a better world is the act of prophecy Absolutely. and so it's not a question it's not a question are the protest rights are wrong they're necessary and good and led mm -hmm. by the holy mm -hmm. spirit and they mm -hmm. should be raising voices to our ears that we need to hear in order to repent and be changed and, um and, yeah which well, i mean like i'm sh i know you've listened to this scott i'm not sure if Al have had a chance to but you know andre henry's interview on the liturgists there he did on anti-racism and he talks mm -hmm. about how he was sitting with a gentleman and the gentleman said that racism is not God's priority. And it, unfortunately, in, in our churches across, around the world, actually, it could be argued that uh, in the majority of them, racism has not been a priority. Um, mm -hmm. uh, equality has not been a priority. Diversity has not been a priority. Uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and how does it make you feel if, if, from, if you're from a minority that, you're not a priority to God. I mean, that's, that's BS. Mm -hmm. It's not true at all. It's, that's a lie. It mm -hmm. is a God's priority and God can have many priorities at once. He's God. Uh, God can mm -hmm. do that. Uh, God doesn't like, you know, as, as Andre was saying, God doesn't say, sorry, I don't have time for your racism because I'm worried about getting that person a parking space right now. You know, it's <laughs> not, that's how, how, how yeah. it, it, it works. Yeah. But how yeah. do we continually make these conversations part of our priority and not just conversations? actions 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 and I, that's the thing i'm just trying to figure out is what actions what what actions of solidarity can i take today to mm -hmm. encourage support stand along be a good ally uh, fund um mm -hmm. from my mm -hmm. bungalow in newcastle county wicklow uh yeah. you know uh because you, you i mean yeah yeah. Can, can I ask what people, what resources people have found helpful? Just for anyone who's listening to this, who would like to go on a further journey into getting a deeper understanding. Is there, is there stuff that you've been listening to or reading that you feel like would be a good starting point for somebody? I know, like, I often feel that there's, that sometimes people can be a little bit af afraid of actually talking about racism and white supremacy because they're kind of like, I don't feel informed, well informed enough to talk about it. I feel like I'm going to say something wrong. I'm sure I have flawed perspectives on this. And so it's easier to keep silent when you don't feel um, informed and equipped to begin to understand just the sheer, the, the sheer huge, hugeness and complexity of the, of, the, of the struggles that we're facing. Is there any stuff that you found particularly helpful? I mean, I've mentioned quite a few things already, but I, I mean, I mm -hmm. think that Following to people like the Poor People's Campaign, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, listening to podcasts on racism with activists uh, like Andre Henry, you know, mm -hmm. and his, his podcast is at Hard Pills and Hope. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, yeah. a really, a really I easing. So. I mean, like the, the, um, the Perkins film actually does open up some conversations and it points you towards his book, Let Justice Roll Down, you know, or Dream With Me that, that John did. Uh, Trying to think of other areas that I've actually found really helpful, you know, generally uh, listening, me listening to watching John Oliver, I found helpful and Trevor Noah. And, um, yeah. and some people could say, Oh, you're, you're just putting yourself in a bubble. I, that's a bubble I want to be in. <laughs> so I want to be in a bubble yeah. with, with those who are opposing racism and who see it as a horror abhorrent evil that it is supported by a, a horrible demagogue and despot that is in the presidency. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm okay with being in those bubbles. Uh, so, and, and, and listening to the words of Sharon, at least Sharon Harper and others, um, those, that's where I've been going. Well, I don't think they're bubbles. I think they're life rafts off the sinking ship that is white supremacist culture. Yeah, um, right. And so wherever it is that we end up next, I want to be in the lifeboat besides those, beside those in, insightful voices that can help us to understand not just what is happening, but the roots that are entangled into it. And um, I just um, read Reconstructing the Gospel by Jonathan Wilson Hargrove, yeah. um, which is uh, the subtitle, which is, um, I think, setting us free from slaveholder religion. It's yeah. fascinating, particularly from an American context. He works if with Reverend would like... Barber. They work yes. together. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, he mentions him a few times in the in in the book, um, and his journey was is is tremendous, and his insights are are spectacular. Um, 
why I'm no longer talking to be to white people about race by Reddy, uh, Rennie Odo Lodge. Um, that's a phenomenal book as well. And it's particularly in the UK context. So I think there's a lot of resources from the US, whereas um, having something that's a little bit closer to home is that's really good. helpful. Um, uh, and if you'd love to get into the history, um, the autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr. is up on Audible, um, but it's read by LeVar Burton from oh. Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, but it includes the audio, f- the original audio from um, some of Dr. King's speeches. Oh, so it actually cool. goes through in the first person from his journals and from, um, uh, from his story. And then, it ju- and then it jumps into the original audio, which is extremely extremely compelling and gives you a, a fuller understanding as well as uh, as well as kind of experience of the roots of the civil rights movement so i found those those right. oh and fourth one um uh i just finished the audio book of i'm still here uh, black dignity in a world of whiteness um by uh, austin, austin channing, channing brown, brown. Yeah. Yeah. and I've that is a book. phenomenal book yeah Brilliant. cool Brilliant. Yeah, because it, it's interesting, even with Andrew, with uh, school, I mean, they, they've been looking at some of the websites and stuff and what, what to look at. And it's been fascinating kind of going through the Black Lives Matter and, and, and all these different things and, and following the likes of Lisa Sharon Harper and, and CC Davis, who uh, works alongside with, with Jonathan Martin over in the, and just getting those voices of having perspective mm. um, to, to help. Because I think it is a case of uh, feeling that the helpless feeling of, of, of even looking at how with the coronavirus how it was a case of that's not going to impact here that's an issue in china we're grand Mm -hmm. and as it slowly crept over europe and you know even i mean going to some of the speeches that i've gone through say but this has no boundaries and and Mm -hmm. race it's that same thing there are no boundaries and we need to understand what needs to be done not just to protect us from such an evil but also educating people around us from this evil saying no no more well there's an arrogant mentality in ireland that says that because um, there's a history of the irish being oppressed by an external force that we then are immune to racism in some way which of course is complete and utter garbage mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and that is not the lived experience of people of color in ireland particularly a, a, a whole range of students that i've talked to uh, on campus who have um, direct experiences of physical and verbal abuse based on race and prejudice um the the historic uh, um, abuse and discrimination towards the traveling community at almost every level of society uh, the continuing abomination of direct provision in ireland and the um destruction of the lives of uh, people who have come to ireland for sanctuary and whose lives are essentially placed on poles and profited off by multinational corporations um uh, indefinitely mm-hmm. um while um you know, we, we, you know, uh, of people seeking safety, it is the exploiting of the vulnerable, and it is the profiting off. The, it's profiting off the, essentially stopping the lives of the stranger, and um, all of which are directly contravening the biblical principles we claim to hold. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, my uh, my kids go to university. One has just graduated, and uh, a lot of a lot of their friends, you know, are. You know, our have, have parents moved here 20, 30 years ago. One of them moved here as a four-year-old from Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, as she walks down the street with them, uh, she sees the racism they experience daily, mm-hmm. daily. There was mm-hmm. a, I, I don't, I, I, it's very rare a day goes by where my daughter doesn't see her friends um, um, being literally, I kid you not, spat at, pushed, hit, sworn at, name calling, ridiculed, side looks. Uh, that's Ireland 2020, unfortunately. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, so you're right, Scott, it's, it's not just an American problem. It's an Irish problem too. And I think that's one of the reasons why I think um, you mentioned earlier with Rubicon last year, I was so, so thankful. And I continue to be thankful for the learning that took place there. And I guess that would be a good resource mm-hmm. too, because I remember just sitting there last mm-hmm. year at Rubicon just going, I'm so naive. I'm so ignorant mm, yeah. of what's happening around me. I want to know so that I can stand alongside with the, and, and do what I can to continually stand alongside instead of just going about mm. my life, you know, wondering if, or not if I can get a, you know, an organic hummus <laughs> today, <laughs> you know, 
Hashtag uh, vegan problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Exactly. But that's my, yeah, you, you understand, you understand my point then. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not really a problem, you know? Yeah. Um, I was, um, I have been reflecting as well on how we actually have these conversations with, yeah. with other people. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes it, it's easy. Actually, I don't find it easy to post stuff online. I find it, it gives me severe anxiety and I spend hours, you know, kind of reflecting on something that, you know, it probably took me minutes to write, but it's, a, it's, a, but wanting to, wanting to understand and get things right is, is so important in the world in which we're living right now. Um, and very often when we're, when we have the opportunity to confront racism, it's rarely a direct thing where somebody says, um, where somebody says something directly racist. Usually it's something that's more, it's, it's cloud, it's clouded with something else or it's, you know, it's, 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 it's much more subtle than that, which requires a different type of conversation. Um, and so I was really struck. Uh, I don't know if you guys, well, Greg definitely doesn't cause Greg's not on Twitter. Are you on Twitter anymore, Alan? Or is Twitter just Scott's thing now? Yeah. Scott's the thing, <laughs> along with Facebook. <laughs> although, although I was a big fan of Twitter when they started boycotting that that man in that oh. house. I thought you said, I thought you were doing the hipster thing of like I was a big fan of Twitter before it was a, <laughs> before it was a big thing. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Although I was no, I, no, I was no. <laughs> um, the, uh, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read you a quick a quick thread on Twitter from a guy called Scott M Coley, um, who gave me who I who I read this last night and I thought it was one of the best descriptions of the Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter conversations. Mm. <clears throat> He said, imagine you're in a th movie theater somewhere in Nebraska. In the middle of the movie, your phone rings. You answer your phone and you proceed to have a conversation at full volume. After about a minute, the guy behind you taps you on the shoulder and says, dude, we're in a movie theater. You could respond in a number of ways. You might say, no, we're in Nebraska. But this response isn't appropriate. In fact, it's difficult to imagine why anyone would offer this as a serious retort. For one thing, it's possible to be both in a movie theater and in Nebraska, as you are, in fact. So it's not much of a re rebuttal. And he goes on to talk about conversational implicature, where the where it's not, when you say something, it's not about what you're saying; it's about what you're not saying. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been. I have found it so helpful to see so many tools online to help us have this conversation, where so often people when people respond to Black Lives Matter with All Lives Matter, um, the, it's not about what they're saying, it's about what they're implying. And it's yeah. the refusal to acknowledge a problem. Yeah. And, this has been, and this has been a huge thing for, um, as we've tried to have this conversation on campus with, with, with people denying the lived reality yeah. of people. And, and, and one of the things that was, was challenging in trying to figure out like, how, we, how we have this conversation is like, there's a, there's a part of me that was like, well, maybe we're not the best people to talk about it. But also there's the possibility that there are people who would listen to us who wouldn't listen to other people. You know, like, yeah. and that that actually that this may 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 make their way make its way into somebody's timeline who wouldn't necessarily listen to other voices, um, and and so that responsibility is there. So I don't know how how do you guys find having conversations about about with you know with people who you who don't necessarily agree with you. Uh, I, I suppose like one of the things that in in conversations with, with an awful lot of American missionary teams that have come over. Mm. When the, when the question is asked um, in relation when they start doing ministry here and, and a lot of times they come and they do something in Dublin and then they're going up to Belfast um, there, there, there seems to be this profound you know what's the deal between Protestants and Catholics why can't you guys just get along and, and, and that, that being very belittling the whole issue that is there um, it it's almost well probably this is the same way as why there's such a, a racist issue in america and we just don't get why and, and i think it's there are people depending on their culture or where they've come from in the lies that have been just accepted to be true mm. and i think that that it's it's always then trying to see why do we have a very particular view like that there's a, a discipleship group i'm part of and and in that conversation one of the girls who's from the states she's been really devastated about what's been going on in the last number of weeks and and she's been devastated by by the actions that have been highlighted but she's been if not more so devastated by the lack of understanding of her friends and family in america that just don't seem to see it as an issue right and, and that that's been a huge 
eye-opening pain and it is hurtful because i think when you realize the people that you thought had a good perspective of who god is in in his love for all and then you realize oh so when you say all you mean of people that i like or the people that are the same as me so when god so loved the world it means my world not the world and i think that that's i think that's the difficulty of just trying to how do you I, 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 very often this boils down to experience mm. you know i mean it's like trying to explain to somebody what does broccoli taste like you know what does it t- what Nasty. does a steak taste like hey come on now i like broccoli there has to be an experience so so where's this experience in in where we are within our own society of saying i've never experienced this or i don't understand so help me understand but for people that we re- don't realize actually they are causing mm. the experience of racism for somebody else that that's a huge shift in in someone's mindset mm. along with their approach which means it's incumbent on us as well then to be it is incumbent on us to be vocal about um systemic injustice and oppression because yeah, yeah. as as one of my, one of the most powerful voice, uh, voices i've heard recently is that as a person of color it is not my job to explain to you how you how it feels to have your boot on my neck mm-hmm. um and so when you ask oh well you know tell us what you know what's it like to be discriminated against it's like it, it's a, it is once again taking a, a lot of activists that i've been reading are, are saying that is also the expectation that i give you my free labor to explain to you why you are the problem. Um, there are enough resources online, there are enough ways in which you can find out if you actually want to know. But if you want the shortcut, you, you know, asking an oppressed person to explain their oppression while, while you are part of it and while you perpetuate it is injustice as part of it itself. Yeah. And so, um, and it is believing that you're entitled to have something explained to you when if you, if you, if you with compassion and empathy actually seek to do the work yourself, this becomes abundantly clear over time. It is incumbent on us to actually do the work and to actually have, you know, to, to have the difficult conversations with those we love and also with ourselves about the ways in which all of this is built into, into how we live and the way in which our world functions right now. And it's having the humility as well. I think that's one thing that's that's missing massively from for 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 those that just don't get or understand. It's actually humbling, saying, teach, "Teach me. I am clueless in in so much of this, you know." And actually having to learn. Yeah, for me, it's I'm just tired of inactivity on this. I'm tired of just saying, oh, "I didn't know." Mm-hmm. Doesn't affect me, so what does it matter? Um, yeah. I'm tired of. Yeah pretending it's not an issue just to get through the day um you know it's not enough anymore you know Mm -hmm. i want to be one of those people like bruce coburn has a song where he says we need to kick at the darkness till it bleeds daylight and i want to be actively involved at kicking at the darkness not just in this area um but in all the areas Mm -hmm. that oppress people and that you know dissemble equality for their own good. I don't want to be part of that that anymore. I'm mm. I'm tired of mm. it. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of being a silent voice on this. I know we've seen a lot of yeah. signs saying that silence is racism recently, you know, and and silence mm-hmm. definitely is complicity. And I think in, it's time mm-hmm. to it's time for it's time for me to just stop ignoring it, stop placating mm-hmm. it, stop pretending it doesn't exist. And to stand alongside yeah. and get involved in every single way I physically, emotionally, spiritually, mm-hmm. mentally can, you know, yeah. that's where I'm at. Yeah. And, and I think being able to reflect as well as like, it's not enough to remove something. It's, we have to ask the question, what does it mean for it to be replaced? And, yeah. um, you know, what, what is, what, what something is going to stand in the place of anything that we tear down eventually. And, you know, having creative sacrificial thinking about that that's saying okay well whatever it replaced i don't i i i don't need it it i need to stop living out of the mentality of 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 longing for whatever replaces it to reflect me and actually yeah. for it to reflect us the, yeah. you know as ronald Roll, rollheiser's um lord's prayer for justice says the truly plural us and um, yes. the us that is beyond just numbers but it also but it, it, it it's it, it's culture creed race class um the the full diversity of the human experience um and i i 
I, I, it's funny because at the same time, I want to, I want to speak up, but I also want to shut up, you know, in that I will, and I want to let other people actually speak after feeling like I've probably dominated in some, in some ways for, um, you know, in the circles in which I've lived, because without even knowing it being a, you know, a straight white man, um, I've been pushed to the front to talk about stuff my whole life. So how do I actually take the pulpit that I, you know, you know, I don't have a pulpit as such, but like, you know, whatever platform I have to actually give it over to other people. Um, and that's why I think this is the first of many conversations that we need to have on this, because this is not going to be a two, this is not, a, this is not a two week transformation for the world. Um, and, uh, and as much as it's good for us to be able to share with each other, our reflections and our, and our responses and, you know, the, the ways in which we know we need to be challenged and change for us also to make, you know, even this a, a, a space where, where we, where we learn and hear and grow as a result of hearing from other voices. So. Well said. And one day people will hear the episode with Greg's stories and regrets. You've missed nothing. We have no regrets about missing that. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Uh, Take care.